Hello everyone, hi, how are you guys doing today? Welcome back to another episode of Reaction to Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. This is Earth, my name is Matt, hello. What's up? Um, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 non-stop for the past like 8 days. That game is really good. <laughs> I'm late on this recording be because of life as well as that, but I have to do this, so I'm, I'm gonna do it. But all I'm thinking about is how badly I just want to go back to playing Baldur's Gate 3, but I, I got to shift into Buffy mode, okay? So last week, what happened? Uh, we had a scary house. We had a Halloween episode. Uh, we got to see what everyone's fears were. Anya is really in love with Sander. I'm, I'm in for that. I really like Anya. And then there was a joke ending. Uh, I watched Angel. Yes. Uh, Angel report. What happened? I actually really like that episode of Angel that I watched because uh, we had a weird man who was like the ultimate man and what the ultimate man was was a man that was able to have full bodily control like a Georgia vampire uh, so he was able to just detach body parts of himself and just move them at will but it was really fun conceptually because the man himself was uh, a creep uh, he was a horrible person, and he was incredibly, like, weak emotionally and mentally. But it was just really cool to have that, like, juxtaposition of someone that was, uh... So someone that's, like, immortal functionally and also is able to do anything he wants on a physical level. But in an emotional realm, he's just completely out of his depth. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And he can have, like, the thing that, like, the, the everyman wants to have, which is, you know, just love. He can't have that because he's just that much of a creep. Uh, so it's, it's, it was a fun concept. I will say that. Uh... Angel took his head off, which was fun. So that's what's going on in Angel Land. Uh, anyway, back to Buffy. Uh, yeah, let's see what's going on with this episode. I'm gonna make this quick so I can finish this and immediately go back to people to skate again. I mean, I have to edit this episode. Um, actually, like, okay, let's detour for a second. So I got Baldur's Gate now. So it came out last month. I didn't play last month. Now I had, like... Like, a friend of mine gifted me, like, some birthday money, uh, and I used that money, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm a treat myself. I'm gonna buy this game that everyone says is really cool. So I got Baldur's Gate 3, and holy fuck, that game is good. <laughs> it's so good. And, like, I, I started playing it, like, the day before I released the the previous week's Buffy video, and it was really interesting because I was like, I don't give a shit about this anymore. I just want to play this game. Uh, so that actually made me work faster. I edited that episode faster because I just wanted to get it over with so I could just go and play Baldur's Gate. So hopefully the same thing will happen this time, um, where I'm gonna have to do it and I'm gonna do it really quickly just so I can just get back to gaming. Angel might take a little bit of time to come out, patron people. Uh, if it doesn't come out alongside this episode, you know the reason. Now, like, I'm not even gonna lie to you about it, but hopefully it will. I mean, it's just a watch along. I can do that relatively quickly. But, like, I've been trying to release the Angel watch alongs literally at the same time as the Buffy episodes. Um, but if it takes a little bit for it to come out, like, uh, a couple days later, but before the next Buffy, then that's, this is the reason why. I actually made a community post, like, uh, two days ago about Baldur's Gate taking over my life, and, uh, people on YouTube were like, dude, same. So, like, shoutouts to you, people on YouTube, who've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, where are my fellow Baldur's Gate players at? I am playing a half-elf draw bard. Uh, playing a bard is really fun. I love having high proficiency in uh, persuasion, deception, uh, and a little bit of investigation, I think. Uh, because, like, I had an encounter where I just talked a guy into giving me a magical item that I needed to survive and also kill himself and all of his allies. And they did. <laughs> like, I just talked to him and I lied to him and he just gave me his stuff and then they walk to their deaths. And that was the encounter. And I was like, dude, that was so fucking funny. Oh my god. Oh, that game is so good. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, let's go watch Buffy. I, I got distracted. It's just I, I like talking about things that I like, you know? I, I, I can't shut up about things that I like. 
And right now, my brain is just filled with Baldur's Gate. Okay, uh, Patreon, I forgot about that. Patreon, uh, and support my channel and support my Baldur's Gate addiction uh, by uh, the link in the description pop up on the screen. You can watch the next two episode reactions, actually. This was full on reactions, and I'm doing some angel watch alongs. Uh, those are on the like low tier. Uh, so you don't actually have to do much in order to get the angel watch alongs because I would feel bad otherwise. But yeah, angel watch alongs, if you want to watch the episodes of Angel that don't really matter as much, but I'm getting through them, Patreon as well. Uh, in just the next two episodes of Buffy, but mostly just supporting the channel. That I would really appreciate that. Uh, anyway, Buffy. So, Buffy, uh, Season 4, Episode 5. Let's go. And by the way, in case you needed to know, I am going for Shadowheart. She's, she's my favorite. I love her. Anyway, Buffy. How long are we going to be in the Parker arc? I would like it if he just was erased from existence. That. That girl. What was up with that? They looked at each other like they knew each other. Like her look was of concern. All right, fighting. Buffy? Parker? This is not real. Go cool fight though. Cool scoring as well. I don't know what to say. After how I've treated you, now I owe you my life. This is not real. So she's really not over him. Beep, beep, Do you beep, think beep, beep, beep. One day you might. Oh. Not even, just straight up daydreaming. The id works solely out of the pleasure principle. It wants. How does this conflict with the ego manifest itself in the psyche? What do we do when we can't have what we want? Buffy. The same scene. I don't know what to say. Okay, this is After different. How I... Can you ever forgive me? Okay. Is this episode about fantasies? Like you're trying to make yourself feel better, so you start imagining it's an heiress about like, what if, you know, all these things that I wish this person told me happened, you know? Where like, he can see all of my like, skills and the things that I'm good at, and I save his life, and then he loves me, and then he apologizes, and then he gives me ice cream and flowers, and his shirt is off, and it's just like, okay. Rough day. Come on, Buff. Be a lonely drunk. I'm finally an essential part of your college life. Mm. I'm the new bartender over at the pub. Got my oh. lighter, my rag, my empathy face. Okay, got a job. I don't believe this is entirely on the up and up. Maybe he's just having trouble dealing. I mean, don't guys sometimes keep the girls they really, really like inside these deep little brain fantasy bubbles where everything's perfect? Maybe I'm in his bubble. And then pretty soon he's gonna realize that he wants more than just bubble Buffy and he'll pop me out and we'll go to dinner and like clearly Buffy, this yeah is my best friend you need to think about not Parker he's no good wherein the mind is stronger than the penis <laughs> nothing can defeat the penis too loud very unseen didn't even no, sound like he said it <laughs> stinky Parker man yeah I agree with he can be really sweet Shut I'm the telling fuck you up. I think that he has intimacy problems because of the death of his father not interested his father's probably alive. I want to talk about that thing with Buffy, but you know, the show is moving. Overwhelming. <laughs> Already struggling. Oh, it's this guy. So sorry, just saw Parker over there. Right. Parker and his latest conquest sets him up and knocks him down. I guess maybe I'm old fashioned, but my father always says if you want to be a gentleman, you don't even care what my father says. I'm sorry, what? I'll see you in class, man. Rough day? Nah, it's been super. We accepted Melody's pledge and made her an official sister of Beta Delta Gamma. And our pins arrived today. I designed it myself. You are so sharp. <laughs> hey, keeping this fine bartender from his duty, a man's gotta make a living. <laughs> it's all right. So, the guy's nice and we're rest. Right, He's I, trying I, to insert I said it's himself. All right. I'm due for a break. Ah, forget it. No, 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 I rudely interrupted, and it sounds like the two of you are having quite the meeting of minds. Possibly debating the geopolitical ramifications of bioengineering. You have a take on that? Wow, what an asshole. Given your socioeconomic statuses, I foresee a B rejects A diet. Why are people such assholes? So we are the future of this country, and you keep the bowl of peanuts full. We are what these girls want. And, uh, four glasses. I would just spit on his drink. On all of the drinks. Just fuck Thanks. these people. If you were tied and gagged and 
left in a cave that vampires happen to frequent. It wouldn't really be like I kill him, really. I'm a slut. No. Idiot. No. You gotta stop being so hey. hard on yourself. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I seem to be bumping into people today. I can't imagine anybody minding. <laughs> we have a very strict policy against you leaving. At least until you've had a drink. Yeah, what my friend's just saying is, you shouldn't be sad and alone right now. You're a very beautiful girl who should be covered with men. Could we be those men? Let's see what direction the episode goes. It might not be a good one. It might be a really uncomfortable one, actually. What else we have this morning? Thanks. It's really pretty simple stuff, you know. Just what's the matter? I feel uh, there's nothing. That was weird. It's when the music changed. Is that the woman? A couple of episodes ago. We could go back to your place. I could make you soup. Oh, that's okay. I'm fine. Thanks. Okay, what's going on with us? Do you know her? Haruka? No. I know they're drummer. It's cool. But I've never heard them play. He seems like entranced by it. Could be by her, but we'll see. Once again, the bassist is the hottest of the group. Like before with the previous band. What was it called? Bed Naked? <laughs> oh, fuck. fuck this episode. <laughs> so I'm getting some important text messages and I don't want to watch this. So let me reply to them real quick. Oh, yeah, what do you like? Well, I don't hate this for a start. Mm. <laughs> Yep. Parker. Then came beer. And then group sex. <coughs> Got her face. No. Okay. Just... That was my question. It's nice. Foamy. Comforting. This is a very young adult episode. Those of you who have done the reading, you already know. What? Yes. She read the reading. <laughs> Well, she's so but lost. That doesn't mean it isn't worth I've, I've never experienced this, anyway. so I wouldn't know. Buffy. Now, before you go, I wouldn't know if this is a like common occurrence when you're hungover, or she, or she has something else like drug or something. Because, like, okay, fun fact about me: I never drank alcohol in my life ever. <laughs> like once, like I mistakenly grabbed uh, like a glass that I thought was Coke, but it was actually beer, and I had a sip, and I was like, Wah! And that was my only experience. I never actually drank beer. I don't drink alcohol. Anyway, uh, it's not. It's there's like a blood. This is like a drug bloodline happening right now in front of me. Yeah, the the Black Black Frost Corporation is evil and putting drugs on the beer. That that's the plot. Of this. You should come to our class on big thinking. Okay, so it's happening to all of them. It's not just her. So that's better. <laughs> All right. All right. This is a interesting episode. Chai's playing again tonight. Chai? The band. Yeah, Ruka's of, band. Yeah. And they asked me to sit in with them. I think I'm just gonna study because of the fun. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I could see how it'd be dull for you. See ya. Wow. Yeah. Really awkward. Okay, let's no, see where this goes. All right, back to comedy times. singing want more beer no i've cut you off did it hurt out you go like beer beer good beer bad 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 beer go home and go to bed say bye 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 <laughs> the acting for buffy there is kind of fun where'd girl go oh god are we all turning into cavemen now? We're a girl go. You're good. Wow. Okay, she's gonna confront them for Buffy. Parker, how could you do this to her? I don't get what you mean. What did I do? I'm not sure I need to explain my actions here. But if that's what you want. Yes. Followed by an admission of undeniable... <laughs> the way he phrases things. Some relationships center on a deep emotional tie. But most are just two people passing through life enriching or aggravating each other's lives briefly. Can't two people who feel an attraction come together and create something wonderful? 
and then go back to their lives the next day better for it, but never overanalyzing it or wanting it to be more than it was? Like, yeah, but you need to specify that up front. P people like Buffy and me assume that intimacy means to friendship and, and respect. Because that's what it is, people yes. People shouldn't have to preface casual sex with, just so you know, I'll never grow any older with you. Yes, you should, actually. If you have any... It the fire out of it. Okay, there you go. Now you sound like a psychopath. I don't regret what happened. Or what we did. <laughs> but I am sorry that Buffy's hurting, and if I misled her, I'm sorry for that too. I didn't mean to. You full of shit. I'm impressed that you care so much about her. He's immediately... <laughs> You're a good friend. <laughs> Oh my fucking god, this episode. I mean, I don't know the way this, the direction the episode is gonna go in, but so far it's not very fun. It's just wild. In wildly different directions. There's a really creepy direction it's going, there's a worrisome direction it's going, and then there's just goofy caveman adventures in the other. Okay. Is that the, the actor? That guy in, in, the, in the gray shirt in the background. I think that's the guy who... Spoilers for House MD. I think that's the guy that kills himself in House, isn't it? What if he just turns into like a Buddy? monster or something? He did, actually. <laughs> okay, that's the Buffy the Vampire Slayer I know. Wait, did he actually turn into a caveman? <laughs> oh, they're all turning into cavemen. Yes. This episode is wild. Hey, easy, we're cool. Okay, this is what you do. You start a fire, and then just go, hoo, hoo, and then they're just gonna run away. Oh God. Is Buffy gonna turn into a cave woman? Fire! Fire! Yes, yes, yes! I forgot he had the lighter. Yes! Some wild shit's happening this episode. Patrons are turning into cavemen. You see the mastermind? <laughs> oh, this is fun. Dancers had fun for this one. The beer. Mm -hmm. Neat, huh? My brother-in-law's a warlock. He showed me how to. Do it. No, <laughs> that's such a Sunnydale thing to say. My brother-in-law's a warlock. <laughs> uh, relax, it'll wear off in a day or so. In a Ooh. day or so, someone can get killed. So Buffy can turn into a cave woman a for a day. <laughs> She's just fucking around with sticks. This is a bunch of gaming with sticks. Girls like, oh shit, what? <laughs> yeah, at that point you're like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> yep. That's funny. I do get to know a lot of women. <sighs> can I can I mute the episode and just go on my phone? Because I I haven't found the one yet. I'm gonna be honest with you, the entire existence of Parker, this character, makes me uncomfortable and I genuinely just don't give a fuck about any scene he's in. You know, I'm, I'm wondering something about you. Just how gullible do you think I am? Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, that's what I need him to hear. You're unbelievable. Make fun of him. Disassemble this guy. That's right, I got your number in, boy. It <laughs> Only find a woman, drag her to your den, do whatever's necessary just as long as you get the sex. I tell you, men haven't changed since the dawn of time. <laughs> Did he kidnap a person? So they should have put more cave woman makeup on her. Not just the hair. I like the hair, but it's still very clearly just her. You can't have beer. Don't make Cave Slayer unhappy. <laughs> Cave Slayer. Buffy strong. Establish dominance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know what the fuck's happening here. I don't know what the. F this stuff is just wild. I have no idea what we're doing. I hope Parker dies. Oh, it's starting a, a, a real fire. That's the real concerning thing. Also, we don't have a slayer. We have to rescue someone. I don't know if Buff is capable of that. Buffy! Is there any part of Buffy still in there? Fire. Fire. Oh no. 
Thank God there's like, I think that's like one girl who's like conscious. There's one hostage. Okay, so a part of Buffy's still in there. The part that's like, you know, gotta face the danger, I guess. You know what a fire extinguisher is? Okay, I guess she didn't fully transform. So I guess there's, there's a reason why she doesn't have the makeup on. You can sense who that is, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 she can. Who the hell's Giles? Blonde. Um... About this tall, sideways limp. <laughs> Just fucking yeets Willow. <laughs> oh, roll athletics. Okay, the girls are gonna be fine. Oh, this is okay. This is what it comes down to. I forgot he was here. I mean, I think she's gonna save him, and he's gonna, like, change. Well, maybe he won't, but... Okay. I mean, I personally hope he dies burning alive, but I don't think that's happening. Yeah. Hopefully he'll, like, change and become a better person after having a near-death encounter like that, but... I like the way Buffy's sitting right now. It's great. Um, whose van is that? I don't know. Wasn't locked. <laughs> oh god damn it. I don't know how to say this. Beat him. Just again. I'm sorry bonk. for how I treated you before. It was wrong of me and you were bonk great him. tonight, really. Please bonk him. Just I may not deserve this, but do you think you could forgive me? Feats were up. I don't know what the fuck is going on. What the fuck was this episode? Oh my god. Okay. Um, that was an episode of Buffy. It was an episode of all time. I'm just repeating myself at this point, but that episode was wild. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. The, this show, I mean, this is very on, on par with everything else the show does. Because this show, like, what they do is that they are gonna start exploring some more serious topics about the difficulties that a teenager into young adult might have with life and then just hard swerve into some funny shit and, and then everyone's a caveman keep beard good fire bed grog is mush you know like it, it's it's really interesting and and i i have to say i'm hoping that this is the end of the parker arc I, I really hope that it is. I really hope that we never have to see that goddamn character ever again. What I wanted to say uh, earlier in the episode, before it hard swerve into memes, um, which it's fine. It's not a hard swerve. It's just a swerve into memes. A hard swerve is something that the show does a couple times, and it's it's weird whenever it does. But in this case, it's just like, no, like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're waiting for the show to reveal itself as like... Who's the bad guy this episode, you know? Uh, and in this case, I mean, it, there wasn't really a bad guy. There was a psychopathic barman that hates this fucking kid. So it's like, yeah, whatever. Fucking turn him into cavemen for a day or so. Um, it's not really an evil guy, but he's just doing shit. And it's like, sure, whatever. I guess that's what we're doing today. But like, you're always waiting for that to happen with the show. So whenever it does, you're like, okay, there it is. You know, there, there is the plot of the episode. But until that is established, it, it is more on the serious side because we're exploring the idea. And we've done this for like two episodes now where um, Buffy has this crush on Parker. I don't know why. He, he manipulates Buffy and everyone into sleeping with him. Really, that, that's all he does. And he's just such a shitty character that you, you never like. Uh, and in that episode where Buffy was exploring the idea of being with Parker, like, the entire episode, I was just sitting here like, okay, where are we going? And then when it finally happens, I'm like, and there it is. Okay, here we go. Um, so... That is something that just makes me personally uncomfortable. And, like, at one point, I actually started getting some messages from, like, my mom. There were some uh, some important messages. And there are some Parker scenes happening in front of me. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to reply. I don't give a fuck about this episode anymore. Like, I just checked out. I'm sorry about that. But also, like, I, I know what's happening. I don't want to deal with that. Moving on. Which uh, is why it made me happy that eventually Willow was like, how stupid do you think I am? And I'm like, okay, thank you, girl. I, I needed that. Um, 
and like that's another thing that the show does where they they deliberately write things in order to have some kind of impact. They wrote that to be like, oh, you believe that Willow is is buying into the the seduction that this guy is doing. And, and like, you know that he's bad. You know that he sucks. And you're listening to him ramble on and Willow is falling for it. And Willow is vulnerable because of the shit that is happening with Oz. And then it's like, just kidding. She's smart and she's not going to do that. And it's like, cool and then and, and then nothing really happens then a bunch of came and burst into the door and just start setting fire to shit and i was like okay cool i i guess this is what we're doing it's like th there's no follow-up to that it's just it just happens and it's cool that it happens but the only reason why it happens is because they want to make you think something and then they pull the rug under you and it's like ha you bought it you thought that she was falling for it, but she doesn't. Because she's Willow and she's smart. And it's like, cool. Okay, where 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 is she going with this? And and she like called him out a little bit in like two lines, two sentences before the caveman burst in. So like I don't know if, like, dedicating minutes to Parker just rambling about bullshit is worth that small payoff, I guess. I'm like I don't know if that was worth it. I would have preferred if Willow had kept going and like completely like dismantle him, like psychologically dismantle him. Because I believe that Willow is capable of doing that. This is what is established here. Uh, she is uh, manipulating him in the way that he manipulates people. She is fooling him. And then she starts uh, dismantling him but not really. She just calls him out and then the caveman bursts in. And it's like, okay, cool. We're doing the caveman now. Uh, and it's it's like, sure, it's the funny caveman, but I feel like the, the entire thing with Willow there is not as good as it should have been. Uh, it is just something that they do for shock entirely. Just like, oh, you think something is happening? Surprise! Psych! It was the other thing. She's cool. And it's like, all right, what's the follow-up? There's no follow-up. There's cavemen to worry about. We're all going to die in a fire. <laughs> they came and brought hostages that had no lines in the entire episode, but they were there, I guess. Oh, man. Like, th this, this is an episode to me feels like, like, like they're doing things. I mean, we're all doing things, but like they're, they're trying to do things and I can see what they're trying to do. I can see what they're, the, the, the belief uh, the, the the ideals are there and then they c completely just fail at what they're trying to do and like i i i guess you can say that the theme of the episode is beer and well the other episode is you know like forgetting and like drowning your sorrows in in you know like a substance like beer uh, so you don't think about things like that. And Buffy gets a wish. She stops thinking. She, she's Jersey a K-woman. And all those asshole kids that they were, like, flexing how smart they allegedly were. Because, like, that's the thing. Is that, like, if you can just recite a bunch of words that you've read. And they sound like smart people words. They sound, like, over, uh, overly complicated and shit like that. Like, that, that, that's no indicative of anything. That you're just saying things. And you think that you're superior because you can say things that other people can say. It's it's like I've encountered that exact same guy in my comment section. In Buffy comment sections, by the way. Like people that just say words and you read them and you're like, what are you talking about, my guy? Like you run into people like that in life sometimes. And they're very hateable people. You see them and it's like, oh my fucking god. So it's like, you know what? That barman, that psychopathic barman that is like, ah, fuck it. I turned into caveman for a day or so. Uh, my brother loves a warlock, which is the most sunny old thing to say, by the way. That's the most sunny old line in this entire goddamn show. Uh, next to this year had the least amount of casualties that other years have in, in the graduation thing. Uh, that was funny. But like, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with the environment. Man, that, that barman knew what he was doing. He was like, I oh, fuck those kids, you know? But, like, if he cared a little bit, uh, he would have made sure that, like, no innocent girls that are being, uh, like, pulled in by these creepy guys get involved. So he didn't make sure that happens. So it's like, yeah, he, he's not that great. But I actually do kind of agree with his plan. Fuck those kids. 
Uh, anyway, so there's some stuff going on with Oz, and I forgot her name. The the singer, the singer for this band. I think she's a girl that we saw a couple episodes ago on a random scene. He was just walking, and he saw her, and it's like, cool. Um, now she's in a band, um, and she's singing. Oz has some... Immediately, he looks at her, and he, like, gets, like, pulled into that. And I don't know what that is about. I mean... The very easy, simple, and most likely explanation is he got a crush on this girl, which now we're, I mean, it's, it's teenage drama, you know, it's like, oh, I have a girlfriend, but oh, I saw someone else, and I started to have feeling for someone else I just looked at, and it's like, and that is such a, like, teenage, like, relationship to have, because, like, in a more adult relationship, (laughs) like, you could, like, look at someone And then you tell your partner, she's hot. And then your partner would be like, hell yeah, she's hot. And that's like, you're both in sync, agreeing as to how hot that person is, you know? Um, Or like, oh, she sings well or whatever. It's like, like, I I think that a healthy relationship should be something more like that. But because this is a teenage drama, uh, Willow, like, first of all, Oz doesn't say jack shit. But that's also because he's Oz. And Willow is immediately completely just super jealous i I don't know what that direction that's gonna go this could actually be where their relationship you know splits apart uh, because oz starts having feelings for someone else and he realizes his feelings for willow are not that strong i mean we already had relationship drama before where willow cheated (laughs) and now we might have more relationship drama in the future but we'll see how that goes alternatively uh, we are in a supernatural show, so maybe she, there is something going on with her or with her connecting with with Oz. Maybe there is something going on there. Um, my prediction, I mean, it wasn't a prediction, it was just something I came up with in like two seconds. When uh, we saw them looking at each other uh, a couple episodes ago, was that uh, they were both werewolves and they could somehow like sense each other. That's what I thought. That could still be the case. There could be something else happening with her. You know, she could be a siren. All right, so I just had a little bit to eat. I'm skimming through the episodes to see what else I can talk about. Because I was just talking about Oz. And, like, the Oz situation with this girl, it's like, I don't know what direction it's going to go. It could be, you know, romantic drama or it could be some supernatural thing. I'm expecting some kind of romantic drama. Don't know how that could resolve, but it's clearly something that is being set up for, like, a, a different episode. Maybe next episode. Um, because this episode, there was no resolution to that, because we went into caveman shenanigans. But beyond that, what else can we talk about? I mean, I I feel like I covered pretty much everything. So we got to hear Parker's view on relationships, while simultaneously you shouldn't trust what he said on his view on relationships, but at the same time, he's, like, what he's saying of, like, you know, people should just, like, there's nothing wrong with just strangers just meeting up and... And, like, having an encounter, and both of them leave each other's lives, like, better um, after one good night. But And it's like, like, yeah, I guess. Because, like, yes, you can do that. Absolutely. However, that is something that you have to establish up front. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's actually a healthy thing to do. So long as you are upfront about what the intentions are. Parker is not. And, in fact, he's manipulative. He deliberately wants these girls to believe that he is like this soft boy sensitive guy and it's it's like i feel like now with the, the hindsight of the year of our lord 2023 um like a character like this is even more insufferable than he maybe was before when this aired in 99 i think um because nowadays i feel like this is this is something that you see too much this is something that you have seen way too much uh in real life and on the internet there's way too many guys that do the the nice guy bit and, and then they get uh they, they in order to try to manipulate um potential partners into doing things and then immediately just moving on from them and and then they are emotionally hurt and there's some characters like like willow um that that they say stuff like you know like men they all just think of their penis or whatever and it's like it's like a very difficult topic to approach and something that the show is not equipped to handle and it, it doesn't like it just doesn't go for it because i don't think it should and like i believe that willow believes that and I also believe that Willow is uh, hurt 
over what could be happening with Oz in order for her to say stuff like that. But I, I also feel like I've heard stuff like that from the show before, too. And you don't draw too much attention for it, because ultimately, it's one of those things that you hear, and you're like, yeah, I guess, like, that's just how it comes across as, because people like Parker exist. But that's what makes him so disgusting, <laughs> right? He's such a disgusting character. And the thing is that I... The, the 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 very first thing that I wanted to say uh, on this episode, when the episode started going hard into Buffy and Parker for, like, the first 10 minutes of it. 10, 15, 15, yeah. It's the fact that, like, the show tried... And I'm not going to give it too much hit because I feel like this maybe is the culmination of that arc. You know, like, we're done with the Parker stuff. And if that's the case, then sure, whatever. We can we can use it this episode and and we'll have a development. And then that chapter of the book is closed. But whenever... the I felt this, like, two episodes ago or one episode... Whenever was the episode where we had to deal with the Parker stuff? I think it was last episode, yeah. Sorry, Angel messes me up, so I, I don't actually remember exactly which episode was which. It is one of those things where, like, Buffy feels like she wasn't enough, or she's trying to make up excuses in order to make it so she can... Uh, and even at the beginning of the episode, she's imagining scenarios where Parker... where she, like, saves Parker, and Parker apologizes, and gives her flowers, and, and, and ice cream, and his shirt is off, and it's just like, okay. Like... Buffy is not over Parker, and in fact, she's trying, like, she's still in, like, and, and, and that's the problem, and, like, wh where I was coming from when I was watching that is, there is a huge disconnect between Buffy and the audience, and you can't, like, when you're writing this, you can't spend too much on it. it it's just a miserable watching experience i think and that's not to say that you have to make you know everything has to be good and fun you know you can make things miserable um you can like media is a way to explore uh different emotions but you can't follow buffy in her rationale for like a lot of it and i was thinking like i don't know what direction they can like they want to take this because as it is right now this is just something that's weird uncomfortable and alienating for the audience and there's like nothing to do here that's how i felt at the very beginning of the episode and the reason why i felt that way is because we've done this for more than one episode now you know because previous episode it was the same thing um two episodes ago at the end it was the same thing and now this episode is the same thing. Like, Buffy's still not over this guy. And she keeps trying to go back in. And I'm sitting here like, this is just weird to watch. Because I feel like we're all in agreement that this is just fucked. And we want to see Buffy overcome it. And in order for her to overcome it, she has to go through uh, the, the lows in order to get to the highs. And then like halfway or like a third through the episode, they swerve into memes and it becomes the caveman episode. And I feel like this is the Buffy the Vampire Slayer way of dealing with problems at this point. Like whenever you have a serious topic, it feels like Buffy deflates the topic by introducing some kind of wacky ass Monster of the Week concept or something that makes it so we don't have to deal with like the really hard serious shit because we're instead being distracted by the, the cavemen and the fire. <laughs> and I feel like this show just does that every other episode. And, like, that's not to say that's a bad thing. Because uh, something else that I realized watching the show, uh, watching other episodes before, is that sometimes this show shouldn't tackle some certain issues. Because the show, is this action-adventure, coming-of-age teenage drama show, it's not probably the place where you want to explore some of those concepts in. However, it is... I, I think it's fine to try to want to tackle onto something that's more serious, more dramatic. But I think that sometimes you just have to be like, I mean, this is weird. Maybe we shouldn't go for it. But Buffy is interesting because it manages to do both things. It manages to go for it, but then doesn't commit fully because it would be really weird if it committed fully into making something that's really serious. So instead it just swerves into jokes. And that's such a weird, like, mix. It, because it, it's trying to do all sorts of different things that I don't think they mix really well. I don't think they do. So sometimes it can feel jarring. This episode is 
Yeah, this episode was a little bit jarring. Not super, but a little bit. Because, like, for, like, the first third of the episode, I was just like, oh, fuck this episode. I don't like this. This makes me feel bad. And then the cavemen came in, and I was just like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. This is funny now. And I was just... And, and the episode turned into a funny episode. That was it. Like, at the end, I was making jokes about, like... I mean, it wasn't a joke. It was a prediction, but also a joke. I was just like, bunk him in the head. Like, that's going to be the punchline. Parker is being honest for, like, the first time in his life about, like, you know, like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry he did to you all those things, you know? And I'm just, like, bonk him. Like, because, like, the music is playing. Like, the, the music of, like, honesty is playing. He's, like, opening his heart for the first time in his life. And all I can think about is just, like, Buffy's going to bonk him in the head. And that's going to be a joke. And... She does that, and that's the joke. And I'm like, cool, good episode. And that's just the Buffy way of doing things, really. Like, we don't have to have, like, a a very dramatic conflict resolution to a lot of this, like, interpersonal issues that the characters have. We're just gonna bonk them in the head, and then it's just gonna be a joke, and then we're just gonna move on with our lives. And that is a very interesting way of solving problems that the show does honestly i'm genuinely curious about like what would the experience be watching buffy if i was like 10 years younger right because i I turned 27 last month so like if i was 17 what would be like watching the show because again there's some episodes that i feel like are really serious and maybe would tackle onto some issues that maybe would be, you know, something that I would relate to more because they would be recent or happening as I'm seeing them on screen, they're happening to me as well. So there is a connection to draw there. And then the show is just swerving into jokes. And I'm like, how would I feel about that? If I was emotionally invested into some of this storylines and drama that I'm seeing, and then it just turns into something that's very deflationary. Will I laugh at it? Will I feel... Would it make me feel better regarding my own situation? Because, like, that's something that you can do, actually, with with something like this. Is that, well, a lot of the drama that you experience, especially during those years, you know, um, I don't know how many people around those ages watch these videos. I don't think a lot of you do. I think my audience for these videos, because I can actually see the... Um, I can see the analytics. YouTube gives you that. Not perfectly and not a lot of them, but you can see a little bit. And I think that most of my audience is people that are around my age and up. Where I'm going with this is that if there are some younger people watching these videos and watching the show, like, first of all, I would love to hear your input regarding how you feel regarding a lot of stuff that happened. Above. I, I suppose even people that are older but watched the show before, like when you were young, um... I would love to hear input as to, like, what it was like to see some issues that are more present in your life being uh, represented on screen and then being turned into jokes <laughs> and how you feel about that. Because something that you can do with that, actually, is that it makes you realize that a lot of those problems are not as important as you think they are. Because that's something that's really true about, like, teenage problems and, like, a little bit young adult problems. Like, it doesn't mean that they're not there. And it doesn't mean that they shouldn't be paid attention to. But it's one of those things where, like, sometimes the real solution is really just, like, dude, like, stop thinking about it. Because it's, like, it's really not that important. A lot of things, when you're around that age, you believe are, like, life or death. You believe that they're the most important thing in the world. And then, like... A couple months later, you're like, yeah, that shit was stupid. I feel like this show might actually be really helpful in actually instilling in you that idea if you were to be watching it around that age. Because you would watch these episodes and you would see some of this character drama happen. And, and, you know, Buffy's hurt over relationships and stuff. And then the end of the episode is just like a joke. And then the next episode, maybe we just completely moved on from that storyline. And maybe you watching that, you would be like, you know what? Yeah, I just need this. Fuck this. This is this doesn't matter. You know, I'm just gonna go laugh with my friends. You know, do some fun shit together, and I'm not gonna think about it. And after you do that, you realize, yeah, I don't think that mattered much, really. 
Um, and like it, it makes sense that uh, Buffy and anyone would be going through situations where like you can't stop thinking about it, you can't stop thinking about like what could be. You start daydreaming and imagining scenarios where you know a, the perfect thing happens. You know, like you save your crush and then they love you forever and they apologize to you, and it's like that's not reality. And also, like that doesn't last long because also Parker. We met Parker in, like, the second episode. He was just some guy that we met. And then the third episode, he became a character where we spent a fair chunk of the episode with him. And then by the end of that episode, he revealed to be an asshole. And it's it's this thing where, like, girl, you met him for, like, a, a week tops, you know? We, we need to calm down. <laughs> like, that shit doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And I think that, again, I'm repeating myself now, but, like, I think that the show... Being being able to show you how, like, crucial and important it all feels, while simultaneously end up resolving in, like, jokes, is, might be able to help you realize that, that that's what life is, really. Like, you think some shit is, like, the most crucial thing in your life, and then you're like, that, that actually didn't matter much. Some stuff that you think is, like, the most important thing in your life, um, a little bit later, you're like, actually, that didn't really that didn't really matter <laughs> like that doesn't mean anything anymore um i was just freaking out in the moment but now that it calmed down i'm good and i think the show might actually be helpful for that like that's something really interesting to me now now that i think about it because i don't think i thought about that before but yeah i, I would again i would like to hear your input if you're someone that like watched the show when you were younger around that age and you felt like a connection with the characters because of it or if you are someone that's around that age right now and you feel a connection with uh, characters right now, and what would your experience be regarding some episodes like this one, where there's some serious character drama, uh, some issues that Buffy has, but then the resolution is just like, bonk him in the head, and it's like, fuck it, who gives a shit? <laughs> um, anyway, I think that's mostly what I can say about this episode. I don't know what, like, beer bad. <laughs> just, just, just beer bad, grog smash. I mentioned while I was watching the episode, and I'm just going to say it again just to have something to talk about. Uh, I never drank alcohol in my life, actually. I don't drink alcohol. Um, so uh, that's, that's the thing with me. So when Buffy was incredibly, like, loopy uh, during that f morning after they had a bunch of drinks, I was sitting there thinking, like, I don't think that's the way, dr like, hunger people act. Like, I don't think that's the case. But I can't just speak from experience. So I'm just sitting here looking at it, being like, I, I don't know. I don't think so, but I don't know. So I can't really speak for sure. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's not how hung hungover people look like. Uh, that looks like someone that's on drugs. <laughs> and that's what ended up happening. She was on caveman drug. So yeah, I, I don't know. That's just a funny thing. Uh, sorry, I don't drink alcohol. I haven't done so. I, I don't really plan to I, i'm not against it it's just like i don't I, I don't see a reason to i feel like to drink alcohol you have to enjoy the getting buzz you have to enjoy like not thinking about things for a while and also like the reason why a lot of people get into alcohol is because there is some kind of social pressure uh to do it because it's like a grown-up thing to do you know especially when you're a teenager yeah i never had that so I, I didn't have that. I completely skipped that. Um, and I also have no personal interest in that. I don't want to stop thinking. Like, that doesn't sound fun to me. And I don't want to feel any, like, buzz or anything in my brain. I'm completely fine being the way I am. Like, I don't want to inflict some kind of uh, dazed status effect uh, on my character. I'm, I'm, I'm fine just being myself. Uh, I was just doing some, like... Uh, Pepsi Black or, or Pepsi Zero, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it depends on countries. Uh, no sugar Pepsi. I like that one. I like, I like Pepsi. Pepsi is cool. This is just a Pepsi ad now. Hi. Uh, I'm just going to go play Baldur's Gate 3. Like, th I'm sorry. Like, I just want to go play Baldur's Gate 3. I had some food. I, I talk about relations or whatever. Buffy. I'm just going to go play Baldur's Gate. I have to watch Angel. I'll get around watching Angel. Maybe later today. Maybe tomorrow. Like, listen, man, I, I, like, this close to finishing Act 2. I think I just 
like I, I think I just have to walk through like a, a door to finish Act Two, Baldur's Gate. Um, I am at the point where like I made really good progress with Shadowheart. I need to get back into this game, man. I need to. It's crucial to me. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it for this episode of Buffy. I, I'm 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 gonna go. They, thank you for tuning into this episode. See you guys next time. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this reaction episode to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you would like to watch the next two episode reactions, as well as full reactions, maybe some Angel Watch ones, you can do so at the Patreon. Check out the link in the description below. Social media. Some cool stuff that I do. See you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye.